I can't stop, I can't stop! Hello, Kevin, and statistically, other people. I'm Pat, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made these Vans sneaker skates. Started as kind of like an art experiment, maybe you saw my other video where I did the same thing, but these are some of the favorite things, the most favorite thing, one of the most favorite, one of my most fit. I like them, I like them a lot. It did take me nine months, but that's not normal, it probably won't take you nine months if you're gonna follow along with my little tutorial here. Okay, here's how I made them. So we're gonna start with the star of the show and that is gonna be the van skate highs that you're gonna make your skates out of. It doesn't really matter where you get your vans from as long as the tops of the shoes are in pretty good condition. I got mine used on eBay for about $20, but wherever you wind up getting your shoes new or used, it's important that you get a size that is at least a half size up from your typical shoe size. This is gonna to be to accommodate our aluminum plate, which we'll be making here in a second. So after you have selected and acquired your Vans skate highs, you're gonna to need to remove that insole. If it's just the standard skate highs, it's a little bit of a bear to get this thing out because it's kind of glued in there. Just be careful and go along uh, trying not to leave chunks of foam adhered to the bottom. It can be a little tricky and I was mostly successful in my attempt. If you get the Skate High Pros, they're a little more pricey, the insole will just slide out. Next, I got myself a piece of two millimeter thick aluminum sheeting. I just got this on Amazon. You can go anywhere from one millimeter up to three millimeters. Obviously, the more thick your aluminum is, the more stability you're going to have. I found two millimeters to be kind of the perfect balance between the two for myself, so that's what I would recommend. And you're simply going to take those insoles that you removed from the shoe and you're gonna trace those out onto that aluminum sheet. Next, you're going to draw another line inside the outline you just drew. You're gonna put it about a quarter of an inch or about six and a half millimeters further in. And this is the line that we will adhere to when doing the final cutting for our insole. This is a vital step that you do not want to forget about or you are going to have a really hard time fitting your insole into your shoe. Now, if you're like a fancy person and you have tools, you can just take this over to, I guess, a bandsaw or something like that and carefully cut out your insoles. I don't have that. I have a drill and a Dremel. So in order to get this shape cut out, what I did was I drilled along the outline and at various intervals. Because I'm gonna be standing on this plate, I didn't wanna feel those little cutouts around the edges, so I kept as close to the edge as I could with the drill while still making sure that it overlapped my line. Once all of the holes were drilled around the circumference of my insole outlines, next I took a Dremel with what I assume is a metal cutting bit, and I went through in between every single one of those holes along that outline. This process took a pretty long time, and I chewed through a bunch of those attachment things, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if it was the best way. In fact, I do know it was not the best way, but it's the only way that I had access to at the time, so it was that or don't have a pair of skates, and daggummit, I wanted a pair of skates. And now a brief word from today's sponsor, absolutely no one. Thanks for watching, I hope you like it. Maybe subscribe if you want, if you want to see more and stuff like that, you know how it works. All right, back to the video. Next, I hit it with some sandpaper and the Dremel a little bit more to get rid of burrs that might be damaging to my tootsies. Look at all that metal dust. If you forget the mask, that stuff goes in your lungs and you can't make cool stuff if you can't breathe. Wear a mask. Next up, we gotta find the center of the sole of our shoes. Now this is a tricky process because we're not talking directly the center of the shoe like you're looking at it and it's down the middle. You wanna find the center of where your weight is on the shoe. A simple way to do it is to measure the thickest part of the heel and the thickest part of the forefoot and draw a line in between those two points. Then you find the center of those lines and draw a vertical line up the middle of the shoe between the center of those two points. It'll look like it's going off to the side, but it is not. That is your center of weight on your shoe. And that is where we're gonna be mounting our plates. And I took a gamble with this because I was trying to keep the cost of this build as low as possible. And I went on AliExpress and I found these Evenstar polypropylene roller skate plates. Now, when you're looking at roller skate plates, if you're buying like traditional tried and true plates, they're usually gonna be made out of either aluminum or nylon. 
there's really not much else out there, and not really much else has been tested out there, so I thought I would give these a shot. I didn't see any reason why polypropylene wouldn't be just as good as anything else, and sure enough, I've been using them for like months and months now. I haven't had any issues, but there's a brand called Sunlight Plates that are excellent nylon plates. SureGrip makes some nylon plates as well. They're a little more expensive, but you got the backing of a company that's not like a mystery Chinese company. So next what we're gonna do is we're going to center these plates on the line we drew down the center of our sneaker. And I don't remember if I mentioned this before, but your plate should be almost exactly the length of your shoe. So you should measure that and make sure you get the right kind of plate. You're going to push a little pin through the mounting holes into the sole of the shoe. This is the best way I've found to get the exact location of those holes, no matter what weird topography your shoe sole has going on. And now it is time to go past the point of no return to drill through the soles of the sneakers. First, you're gonna put your aluminum insoles into your sneakers. It's kind of a two birds, one stone situation when you drill through the sole of the shoe. It's also going to mark with the drill bit on the aluminum insole. You're not gonna be drilling all the way through. You're just marking the aluminum at the same time. Now we are going to remove our aluminum insole from our shoe and you'll see on there where we need to fully drill holes all the way through that insole. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, making sure to countersink the top of the plate so that the bolts we use sit flush because we are gonna be standing on these. And I don't wanna feel bolts in my feet when I'm skating. It's, it's weird. The final mounting is a simple matter of putting the bolts that come with your plate down through your aluminum insole, through your shoe, and through your skate plate, and you tighten the whole kit and caboodle down with the included nuts. If your bolts are a little long, you can cut them off with a hacksaw. I didn't need to do that for mine. You might also want to add a little heel lift for balance and an extra insole for comfort. That part is totally up to you. By the way, the last time I made a pair of skates on this channel, I got a few people commenting that I was gonna break my ankles, and that was a little bit of a valid criticism because the plates and the shoes and the stuff that I used in that video were very much just an experiment. Definitely wasn't a recommended approach, but I think a lot of people got confused about the very nature of roller skates. If you don't know how to roller skate and you put on a pair of roller skates, yeah, there's a chance that you could break an ankle because you don't know how to skate. It's like, don't drive a car, you're gonna crash. Like, do you know how to drive a car? That's kind of an important part of the process. It's not like roller blades, which I think a lot of people have more experience with, where you do need ankle support because that's where your stability is coming from. When it comes to roller skate, the wheelbase is what's providing your stability, not your ankles. It gives you a lot more freedom in your ankle movement and a lot more options with your ankle support. Do what's comfortable for you. But I'm telling you, like professional skaters use vans all the time to make their own roller skates and they're fine. So I trust them more than I trust myself in this regard, so that's why. I'm making these the way I'm making them, and let me tell you, I've been using these for a while, and they're pretty great. I can't stop, I can't stop! I'm kidding! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! And that was nine months ago. So, in the meantime, I have moved across the country from Texas, Austin, where I used to live, to um, the New York City metropolitan area for reasons that you are probably aware of if you uh, have looked at the news. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about making stuff, and I'm looking forward to outfitting this tiny apartment with a makerspace. So that's gonna mean uh, all sorts of creative ways of getting stuff done in compact spaces and portably, because I had to get rid of all of my big tools and stuff, which is a bummer, but opportunity for growth. So if you're interested in seeing that, stick around. As far as these skates go, obviously you've noticed that they have wheels on them. If you're gonna get one set of wheels, I would recommend these ones, 57 millimeter team roller bones wheels. They're very hard and uh, not terribly priced. If you're gonna be outside, I recommend these bad boys, the Moxie Gummies. I take mine to the park on occasion, so I've got the CIB park wheels on there and they are too tight right now, but don't worry about that. So yeah, plate, a triumph in my humble amateur opinion. I accept no responsibility, but if you wanna do it, links below. Hope you had a good time, I had a good time, and uh, yeah, get off my lawn.